Hi there everybody, welcome back. My name's Chris Ormy and welcome to our third racing season in Starters Order 6. Now, where we left off at the end of the previous season, there were some uh, big changes being made. We'd done quite well. We actually got an unbeaten horse in Miss Swan. Uh, you know, Triple Crown winner. Money in the bank, fully developed out the farms. So, this year we're looking to now start the breeding program in earnest. Uh, use Miss Swan to finance maybe getting in a couple of younger horses. So we can start looking at the five and six year olds at the end of this season. Of which I believe there's about seven or eight that are going to turn either five or six. We can look at moving them into the breeding barn, clearing out... A few of the uh, lesser potential and perhaps not so good breeding prospects from the breeding barn. We can move them out. And then we'll just get that ball running for the future. See if we can produce ourselves a really nice couple of colts along the way. Uh, or fillies. In fact, for breeding purposes and whatnot, I think fillies... Um, might be the better option and so we're going to jump into a little bit of the action now you've got a full car of races booked and uh, i'll just run you through a few of the changes as well that we've got so as you can see here everybody's got a race there's a bunch of horses there which are going to be put into the breeding barn there's a bunch of horses which are going to be sold. We're a little over six, a little under six million here uh, in the bank. Let's save before we start. And let's just see what we could actually do this season. So, up first here, the six for long Palos Verde Sticks. It's a great two race. Rindanica and okay okay looking decent there in the paddock so let's go we are the favorite for this race um i didn't see too much in that field to worry us i think we are deserving favorites and Rindanica should be able to take this should be able to take this quite comfortably really so Oh, it is raining, though. It is raining. I did not check that out. Okay, so we've got to get off to a good start, and that is a good start. Forging out ahead. Suave Devil just behind us with Cathos. Save the Prophet. Willow the Wisp. Purge. Nick, 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 and Storm Commander towards the rear. So let's just speed this up. You can see there, Suave Devil wants to come on and uh, get into position. Here comes the pack. They're chasing down, but in the last furlong and a half, Rindanica holding off most challenges. Here comes a couple of late bursts, maybe. But I don't think it's going to be enough. And there, by a head, Rindanica takes the opening race of Season 3. That was fairly comfortable. Maybe not as comfortable as it could have been. But we were the highest rated horse. Um, yeah. I'm not too... I'm not too impressed right now with that. I kind of expected it. But that is our first grade 2 on Rindanica. So that is stepping up ever so slightly in quality. It's a nice horse over the short distance. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm quite excited to see what it can do in the future. But that was a nice little test. I think I really need to throw it into grade 1s just to see kind of where we'll be able to... Uh, to finish up on that. 
So that's our first race of the season. That's a win. And we're up $120,000. That's what I like to see. Uh, it's very easy to make money when you've got three or four really good horses. I think I've got, you know, what, 12, 13, 14 maybe. I'm having to sell some of these young horses, though, that I bought in the off-season. Uh, Carudal is up next. A horse that... A 1 in 3 win record, that's not bad. I mean, I, I've always expected more from Carudal. And it's a horse which... Really, it's time to prove what he can do. So let's just see... There he is, not favourite. Um, he is the highest rated, he's not the highest weight. Yeah, but Shamoan is definitely the favourite there. I would agree with that. It's going to be close though, and I do back my own horses quite well. I think Carodal can do it, it's just, you know, it's just not going to be easy. And I don't have much of a problem with that because, hey... When it's been easy, Canada sometimes can't get the job done. So let's see how we start. It's in the middle of the pack here. We're going to push out here. Nice. So Bestowed is up ahead. Inside us is Shamoan falling back a little bit. Fort Prado, Reckless Hero, and Victorious Boy all in that chasing pack. Alpha Capo, World Trade, and Power of Surprise going towards the back. And we're leading out the way with Karu Dahl. So, um, yeah, I think we all know what Karu Dahl does in most of these races. He runs a really nice race and doesn't quite get it done. Looks like he's making his move. And then we round that last turn. Here come the challengers from deep. Including the power of surprise driving for the line. Shamoa making small ground. But Carodal again by a neck. So. Again making all of that race. Leading from the front. And. Uh, yeah okay that that's a good win. That's a good win. I'm happy with that. I'm fairly happy with Carodal there. It gets us off into a nice position. Right, is there anything we want to pick up at this auction? I really don't think so. Let's just get rid of our horses here. I think we ended the last season with a decent amount of money. I think we're down on that because of how much some of these horses cost. There we go. So we're back down to a page. You can see Canadal and Rintanica both getting wins. Both earning us 120,000. And we're off to a good start. So. Let's jump on through. And let's see if we can make it a hat trick of wins. We should be able to. Unbeaten Miss Swan. 12 wins out of 12. Has earned 10 million prize money 132 rated triple crown winner so let's see how miss swan starts her four-year-old season she is favorite she is top weight she is top rated by quite some distance um and this is only a grade two i i believe that miss swan should take this quite comfortably my only worry is even if she does Maybe her rating slips, and I I would not want that at all. I'm looking forward to seeing if she can push to a 140. Now this course didn't look great there, but okay. So who else we got in this race? Nice start by Miss Swan up there with Cypress Cove. 
They're going to fall back. Dancing Dusty coming through. And as the field begins to settle, it's Dusty Ann in third. Miss One now just riding behind the leader there. Pinpoint, Showless Tail, Lone Star Deputy and Bang of Mischief. Great start for Cypress Cove, but then right to the back. Maybe we'll have to wait and fend off a late charge there. Everybody getting up in position, look. And we're coming round the turn. And as we come now into the last furlong, driving down the stretch. Couple of late runs here, but Miss Swan is going to hold them all off and takes it on the stretch. I like that. I like that. We've seen Miss Swan lead from the front quite often. It's nice to see her sort of settling there into the back, um, just behind the leaders, you know, into the pack a little bit and running out from there. So that's quite a quite a nice start. We did drop down to 130. We did drop down to 130. You need to find some good grade one races there. But three out of three wins at the start of this season. Again, another 120,000. So we're making money all the time. That is what is most important. Um, and yeah, we've only got one new horse, actually. So we got tripped over, which is an unraced two-year-old. That's our latest. Uh, six furlong horse. I don't like the fact that it doesn't have any finish application, but decent potential. Maybe something to work with. Not going to be a top horse, I do not believe. But um, kind of the best two-year-old that we had. Definitely the best two year old. We've still got Delirious and Heroes Tribute, who I think are really nice three year olds now with a shot at Triple Crown. Um, if they can run the distance, I mean, Delirious I'd give a shot to, Heroes Tribute I'd give a shot to as well. We've just got to get them there, get them in contention, and see what they do really. That might be one of the first times we'll actually uh, we'll see yeah, one race having more than one of my horses. But that's for a future that's for a future episode. Right now, design for luck. Yeah, Suncat should probably be favourite. A lower weight than other rated similar rated horses. Uh, Storm's path looks a little hot. Let's go see what we can do here. And what we can really pick up. It'd be nice to grab another win here. But uh, let's see where we go. So, not a great start. We're going to fall towards the back here. Let me go inside there. Just taking things easy. There's Ella, Storm's Path and Prince, Priceless Legend up at the front. Well, at the back with Suncat and Dr. Park. Suncat now making some nice moves into position. And... Yeah, we left this really late. I, th I still believe we can get, like, second place. Maybe have to settle for third. Because Sun Cat making that last gasp dive for the line. Not the best. Not the best. I kind of hoped for a little more there. I figured we could get top two. Um, yeah, okay. I'll always take top three. I will always take top three. Highest rated, highest weight. Let's see if Burnley can get us back on the winning trail. So far, we've got three wins and a third. As long as we don't fall outside the top three, I'm going to be happy with most of these races because 
I have kind of booked them in order for us to get top three at least. And with a good chance at winning. So it's a decent start. Nothing too spectacular there. But Burnick does like to go to the front. Look back. Just 2 2. Miss Bridget Jones and Stull Champ. They're just at the back of the leading pack. Soon, soon, Speed of Sonata with him. Just making moves. And as we come into the back stretch, Burnick has made most of this running. And will start to pull away from Speedy Sonata. Is there any late charges coming from the field at all? It doesn't look like it. I think Burnick's going to take this. That was quite a comfortable race. And I'm pleased to see Burnick on the winning trail. Because there have been many times where I thought Burnick was going to win. And you know, like those three seconds there, not so good. But um, if you include last season, then that's four wins in a row. We found uh, a good little vein of form for Burnick. That is her fourth Group 3 win. I'm okay with that. That was really nice in terms of positioning. That's kind of where I want them, near the front. Um, I'm, not, I'm not too worried now if they go out early and sort of make a lot of the uh, early headway because I've had horses do that especially well including Miss Wan so let's just hope that we can keep going here high weight very high weight um that's like a stone and one pound no giving up has actually refused to start twice might not give up but it does refuse to start an overweight field which helps us slightly we are the quality horse and this should be a win but i don't know carrying that much weight into this race just slightly terrifies me so let's see oh what a start there are you serious plunging out of the gates and with a star goes up no giving up has refused once again Casparino, Midnight Charlie, and Timeless Passion there. All up here with the leaders. So, it looks like this is a very, very tight field at the moment. Five furlongs to go. Are You Serious did very well out of the gates and is making all the running. With a star gets now into position, ready around that last turn. And as we come into the straights, With a star is going to try and kick on. Midnight Charlie looks to be coming up a little bit, but I don't know if anyone in this field really has a lot of pace on this back stretch. With a star fading quite badly at times there underneath that extra weight. But it will be a win. So very happy with that. Rating goes up a little. That's another win for With a Star. And there we go, opening six races. It's five wins and a third place. So with a star, what's that now? A hat-trick of wins. It's four in a row for Burnick. It's 13 out of 13 for Miss Swan. Rindanica's got back-to-back -back wins. Hopefully going for his first ever hat-trick. And Carudal. Yeah, we've only ever got two wins in a row for Canada. We're going to try and match that and then better it over the next two races. So the breeding indicator's flashing. Um, okay, so Magnificence and Drive Time have successfully bred. Kobold and Supremo Secret also. And we do have some new horses. So let's get terrified of rabbits. Breeding with Ruwaki. Hopefully that distance will come into nice triple crown territory. Organically grown and one to five. And we build ourselves a little sprinter there maybe. What other options have I got? Yeah, not much 
we'll put those two together let's see what's the top rated Phillies here Defensora and very vocal so where's Defensora okay we'll do that and then applaud with very vocal there we go so everyone's done some breeding this year we've got six falls no sorry five falls on the way um next season we'll have we'll have some two-year-olds in our stable we've currently got five at the moment and another five possibly or six to go so that's going to be quite interesting there as well just save the game quickly all right let's go to the racing uh day skip it and get to the auction group three winning five-year-old i don't think that's that's not gonna improve our breeding stocks we could look for two-year-olds but you know what i think i'm gonna keep uh keep an eye on the breeding program so yeah let's just jump straight in padlock a good horse padlock but didn't really do much last year a couple of early wins then sort of went off the boil and yeah okay so we're up to a mile mile four yeah, i'm not sure if there's any more actually it might be a mile five in this horse highest rating we've ever been off the back of a win at the end of last season and padlock goes again so let's see where is his race there we go top weight top rated nothing really else to to talk about short field and uh, none of the names stood out so i don't think there's any real challengers in this field let's see how we start and there we go decent enough start let's speed it up and padlock will go to the front with pay the fox patriot of flame in third alongside miss maybe soldier of fortune sarland and look at evan at the back so yeah this is a uh, pretty typical stuff from my horses go towards the front stalk the leader a little bit of easy a little bit of an easier run get into position between five and three furlongs out ready for a charge come strong off the last turn and drive for the line pay the fox doing well patriotic flame patriotic flame's got a great little burst here down the stretch and padlock there we go padlock now driving for the actual line i was a little worried there but padlock had that all the way and turned it on just where needed that is a good win so i'm fairly happy with that rating goes up again it's a good four-year-old stallion it's back-to-back -back wins for only the second time in his career and yeah very happy with that you know we're pushing out our potential it's a shame about the high deterioration but padlock could be a really really nice horse so that's yet another win under our belt we have five left to go and the starboard bow is up next didn't really place outside the top two last season should have probably won every race bar one maybe I, w I wasn't very confident in the breeders but everything else i think he should have won and was uh, a little bit below but four group wins high potential great finishing this is a horse i really do want to breed from and see what we can go 
and try and get. So I'm hoping to get the rating above 130. I'm hoping to get back on the winning track. And I'm hoping to start a big five-year-old season for the starboard bow. It starts today. We got a little bit of a trip. And well, there we go. We're at Turf Paradise. It's a grade three race. That's probably not going to put his rating up, sadly. But top rating by an absolute mile. Top weight by about nine pounds. So you're looking for these horses, maybe 80, 85s to challenge. There are none. So, you know, I'm a little worried there maybe about Master Stewart. You know, if we get a bad start or something. Apart from that, we should absolutely be in control of this race. I don't see any horse that's really going to challenge us. So, we're on the inside. And there we go. Aptitude. That is another horse that uh, I had and actually sold this season. I picked up. So, there we are. Chin High Torrid Affair, Tensus Bolts out in front. Dix Union, Aptitude, Master Stewart, and Montej, the other horses in the field. The Starboard Bow settling nicely at the back, ready for a late charge. So carrying high weight, running at the back, isn't really going to do too much war damage, I don't think. We need to get into position and start making our move now. Chin High has got a great... A great lead. We're coming round the outside there. You can see Dix Union and the Starboard Bow, though. Both starting to make their, their charges. And as we come into the back straight, which horse is going to make this move and which one is actually going to be able to get this job done? They're both round the outside, and Dixie Union looks to be holding off here. Is there a dive from the line for Starboard Bow? No, there is not. Dix Union takes it. By a head, I don't even think that would have been a a short head. It's a quarter of a length. That's quite poor. That is quite poor. We were a furlong under. We were carrying top weight, so. Okay, I kind of take that. At six wins, a second, and a third for the season, Starboard Bow dips down to a 128. That's unfortunate. That is really unfortunate. Delirious up next. Big hopes for this horse. We have so many hopes for this horse. Top weight, top rated, and a couple of challengers in this one. But let's see if Delirious can come out on top. Okay, so... Let's see how we break from the gate. That's a decent start. That's a decent start. Move out towards the front. And there we are. So Delirious leads. Michael Leon World hits chasing. Hello Saratoga and Too Many Bucks in contention at the moment. Stormy Grant and Judges Case at the rear. Ready to make their move. So four furlongs out. Four furlongs out. Three. We run the turn. And here we are. One and a half furlongs out. Down the stretch now. Fighting for the line. Delirious is making his move. Stormy Grant is making great progress there. Up to third. Loses a little bit of steam. And now Delirious is trying to fight for the line. Stormy Grant looks to get maybe maybe just pipped there for second place, but looked like he was kicking on for the line. Might have just got there. And that's a short head away, but that's a good win for Delirious. That is another unbeaten horse. And that's now six in a row across two seasons. So, very happy with Delirious. Um... Yeah, we need to step up in quality of races, I think, a little bit. And we need to have one eye on, though. Nice, it's improving. Look at that. One mile one for Delirious from this point on. Maybe push it to one mile two. Get it ready for that Kentucky Derby. And just see exactly what we can do with that horse. We do have, hopefully, a contender. 
So that's six out of six. Hero's Tribute's another nice horse, but... Yeah, it hasn't run as well as Delirious. It's not going to be favourite for the one by one El Camino Real Derby. Class 1, Grade 3 race. I skipped the day because I clicked the wrong button. And it comes fourth. Wow, perhaps skipping it uh, affected things there. But that is our first fourth of, of the session. That's uh, very disappointing. Very, very disappointing. The rating go up a tiny bit. A tiny bit. Um, beginning a pick up towards the end. Okay, so a mile two. So Delirious, yeah, Heroes Tribute, maybe Triple Crown contenders there. So we'll, we'll see. We will see where that goes. Next up, though, is Tripped Over. Let's jump into an auction, just see if there's anything too good to pass up. No Grade 1 winners. We don't really want to check for two heroes. We've got enough horses, plus we're breeding quite a few as well. So... Back-to-back -back days for the last two. Travel a thousand miles for the debut of Tripped Over. Let's just save the game quickly, and then we are going to the races. There we go. So six furlong maiden. Nothing really to look at there. A bunch of unraced horses in this, and yeah, this isn't the best coat we've ever had. I don't believe that. You know, there's going to be any real, uh, any real major races it'll win this season. I want to see where it goes as a three and four year old if it makes it that far. But uh, I'd hope we get off to a good start. So, Tempest Storm at the back, Electric. What's that? Executrix. Wow. Pioneer Bird, Miss Juicy. Sweet Valor's moving up. Desert Sense, Kidari, Wild and Ready, Arunia. Just behind, tripped over. Oh, lovely bit of lightning in the background there. That was nice. Oh, and tripped over's going to fail at the line. And Whoa. Holds on to second, holds on to second, which is okay. Faded quite badly there. Runia had a second gear to go to. And I'm very disappointed. I'm very disappointed there. I thought that... Uh, yeah, I thought we had more than that. We should have won. It's a good rating nonetheless. It is a good rating. So... Okay, we just need to run at six furlongs again. See if we can close out the potential for this year. But um, it's a work in progress. Tripped over is definitely a work in progress. Can train quite well. We do have a full setup, so it might actually develop quite nicely. No finish application. We saw that in that running, sadly. And uh, Gentleman JJ is up next. Gentleman JJ is up next. So let's see what he can do to round out this opening video. He is favourite, he is top rated, he is not top weight. So, he's three pounds heavier than this lot. Maybe there'll come a challenge if one of these is a little bit of a low rating for the horse. Pert reply, I quote like six, for, you know, six uh, things, six pounds back. That will put it up to a 104. That is a challenger. And survivalist is probably another challenger, which is why they're number two and three in the betting. But gentlemen, JJ should win, should win. So let's see if he can get the job done. Round out what has been a pretty good, pretty good uh, day's racing, to be fair. A fourth, which we skipped by accident. A third, a second, and everything else a win. Let's see if JJ can carry on that. Not the best of starts. Russian Elite broke up well. Survivalist really wants to go. 
So let's see when this field settles down where everybody's running. So Cherokee's Boyce Van Hassan at the back. North of Dixie Russian Elite, Pert Reply, all there. Catano, gentleman JJ now moving into position. Survivalist Pine for Jana were up in the lead. And as we come now into the straight, Survivalist has it. Gentleman JJ is going to drive out. Hopefully he doesn't fade. And Pert Reply is doing a little bit worse than expected. Gentleman JJ though. Demolishing that field. Survivalist will take second there, as expected. Put reply down in fifth. So, yeah, that, that was a bit of a poor run. Not quick enough. Understand uh, that. Survivalist was our biggest rival. Got beaten out by three lengths. Gentleman JJ holds his... Rating, he's got full potential, 85 as a four-year-old. Yeah. That was nice, that's the first win since June last year. Absolutely fantastic stuff. Only an allowance race, but it is a feature race, it is another prize that we have taken. And there we are, that'll round out the racing for today. So you can see Hero's Tribute came in fourth. Uh, Design for Luck picked up third. The Starboard Bow and Tripped Over picked up seconds. Caradal, Miss Swan, Burnick Delicious with a star padlock. Rin Danica and finally Gentleman JJ just now. They all pick up wins on their opening races for the season. Uh, the Breeding, you've got... We've got five two-year-olds coming through next season. we got five foals at the moment with another six being bred, hopefully. Uh, I am retiring a few of these at the end of the season because I do not believe that they are good enough. So that's five fillies to go. Um, that will actually leave us with Rowaki, who's a decent little horse, and Destiny Calls, which is another decent little horse uh, and one to five who didn't make it as a racing filly but you know we're gonna give her a go in the in the uh, breeding barn see what she can do we got some young horses in here I think we got five males three females moving forward so uh, yeah hopefully we can add to that maybe at the end of this season with one or two but for right now, I'm very happy with how the breeding program is. I'm very happy with how the racing's going. We've got good money in the bank, and we're off to a terrific start for this season with possibly two, not full contenders, but two runners, at least in the Kentucky Derby. And maybe we'll take a shot at the Triple Crown if one or both of them sort of uh, looks impressive enough in that race. Until then... I've been Chris Ormy. This is Status Order 6, Season 3. I hope you're enjoying it, and I hope you stick with us as we look ahead to some more big races, including those triple chromes in the future. Till next time, take care of yourself.